right, hello 14ers, brothers and sisters, welcome back to Ministry Revealed. It is October 14th, 2019. Are we excited? <laughs> I know we're excited, right? It We're, we're potentially looking at, what, uh, a week left? Potentially looking at a week left before the escape. Is it really possible? Is it possible that we've been given this understanding, guys? Well, I'll tell you what. In today's video, we're going to summarize these things that have come to this ministry that have been revealed here <coughs> for the past two years. Many of you guys have been asking about it. And today, you're going to get it. I'm going to do my best to keep it within that time frame that we usually do, but it is going to be a summary of these biggest pieces that have been revealed, that have given us, <clears throat> excuse me, so much of this understanding. Um, you know, and it was so exciting, guys. Uh, you know, this video is coming out a little bit later than they usually have been, only because it was uh, Thanksgiving here in Canada. Actually, I think today is Thanksgiving. Um, and so yesterday was a big Thanksgiving dinner and excuse me, I, I was the, I did Brussels sprouts and I, I baked the, uh, pumpkin pie. So I do a lot of the cooking, but this time it was at our, uh, the in-laws house. So I only did a little bit, but so that kind of pushed me off with some running around and, and getting that done yesterday. But I'm kind of glad it did because I've been humming and hawing for what to do in this next video. I've had this sense of, Lord, what what more can can I can I show them? What more can I show them? I know for the most part the people here in this ministry they've been around for a while they've been watching they see it they understand it. What more can I show? And you know I've been pondering this for a couple of days, and just uh, last night, as I was contemplating what I was going to do before leaving for dinner. I thought, you know, what if I do this summary? Many, many people have been asking for like a summary video of these of these things. And I thought, oh, you know what? Maybe I'll maybe I'll focus on doing something like that. And so I got home from dinner last night and I was up till like 2 a.m. putting this all together, reflecting on on the why. Why are we so expectant at this time? Not not because Alan says so but because everything Alan's been showing has been from the scriptures. <laughs> Guys, it's, I've, I've only shown from the scriptures 90 plus 95%, 98% of this ministry is just scripture backed by scripture, backed by scripture. Everything in connection with the previous scriptures and every time they're tying in with the other ones and every time something is revealed that is new, it ties in precisely with where the other ones were talking about or uh, the time frame they were talking about. So guys, it was it was deep. It was it was a, a tearjerker putting it together, but at the same time, it was so so exciting. All right, and guys, and it, it makes me even think about you guys. You know, it it brings me back in reflection to to how things began and, and how this started. It was not my intention. I didn't know any of these things. When I started the, the channel Ministry Revealed, I did not know any of these things. I started it just repeating what pastors were talking about that I was listening to. And my goal on my knees was in prayer to say, Lord, if it be your will, use me. Use me. <clears throat> if I can help one, if one person will hear and believe because of what I share, fantastic. I will have done a little bit for the for the kingdom. And very shortly from there, within months really, because I think I started the channel in January or February, something like that of 2017. But I didn't start doing videos right away. And, <clears throat> you know, it was, <laughs> I'll tell you, it was, it, it was something else. Just how it started and because you know i've mentioned this to other people 
because I had nobody to talk to about these things that were being revealed, I didn't have a, a church leader or anything that I went to or spoke to. I didn't have any close believers in my life that understood any time, anything in end times or, or who the gospels were speaking to. I had nobody to talk to about these things. And you know what? That was the blessing. That was the blessing. I know it seems weird. We should have others, and I get that. But for this ministry at that time and for his purpose, that was the blessing. Because I've spoken to about a half dozen people here in Ministry Revealed who have said over the course of two years, I had a sense years ago, I had a sense a few years ago that it was two sets of seven. You see, people have, people have had this idea many times. But every single one of them at every single moment in time have all gone to others to ask them what they thought of these couple of things that they thought they were noticing. You see, and when they went, they were pulled out of that thinking saying, no, you're not seeing it properly. It really is this. It's a seven here. And there's just that same seven being spoken about here. And, and it's all part of the same. And everybody says, said, oh, okay, maybe it's not. Whereas I had no choice. <laughs> I didn't know any better. It started with the Gospels. Then it was the 14 years. And then all of these things from there just continued because I just followed where the scriptures were leading and spoke to nobody outside of doing videos. It was not my intention to teach. It was not my intention. I had no idea any of this was coming. As I was understanding and as it was being revealed, I was just posting it. And so many of you had either rebuked or said, this is crazy or you don't know what you're talking about. But all of that started to settle down. Oh, do we get it more maybe now in a sense? Yes, because more and more people are hearing that aren't, aren't looking yet. But how many of you had thought that at first and then realized the truth of it because you were Bereans, you were true, truly seeking the scriptures and the understanding. You took the time. How many of you had said, I just knew it didn't fit in seven years. I knew it. It was impossible. How many of, the, of you believers here are now in ministry revealed saying, that was me, right? Most of you, most of you had thought that, right? It's just, it's beautiful, guys. And when you see these things that we're going to cover today, these main points that without me, so I don't get too out of line, it's only on three pages, okay? But it, we're going to cover some scriptures, in those three pages, of course, as you can see here, to make the point. We're not going to go into every portion of every point and of every scripture that backed it and confirmed it. We're going to give you the, I'm going to give you the, the overall, these main pieces, okay? These main portions that, that gave these revealings. Because as you know, each of these things are videos on their own. And within them, there are videos of within each one of them in their own right. All right. So I'm, I'm trying to do my best to pull together in, in as quickly as I can and as summarized and as clear as I can, God willing, that all of these things tie together to show why. Why we are so expectant for now. And guys, we're going to continue to speak in this expectancy, in this, uh, is it really this time? Until the moment it starts. But it's coming. When you see this today, summarized and completed and put together at the end, you will understand. In my opinion, from what the scriptures have revealed to me over these past two years, in over 200 and some odd videos and thousands of hours, there is no other year. Not maybe, not kind of, not possibly. There's no other year. Whether it's 
next week, you know, Sunday into Monday, which I believe is the day, or whether it's the day before uh, March 8th, you know, March 7th, 2020, when Israel will then be confirmed truly as the latest point for possibly being now 71. Guys, we're talking less than five months. Do I think it's going to go that far? No, I do not. No, I do not. And we'll cover these things today. Okay? <clears throat> now, I also, guys, I talk about the website now, all the uh, just about every video, if not every video. And one of the reasons is because of the forum. You know, there's a uh, hundred and some odd people in there, in there in the forum now. All right? You can just see, I just went to the website, ministryrevealed.com. We can go to the forum. And the reason I wanted to go to the forum, I wanted to just give a shout out thanks for all your kind words uh, that you guys said to my wife. My wife, for the first time, jumped in. I was telling her, I said, just go in. You should jump in, get into the, the forum, you know. Tell people hello. They'd like to hear from you. And so she jumped in. Uh, I don't know where it is. See, many of you guys, these are all you guys sharing. This is a, oh, wait, this is the topics. Yeah, this is the news feed one. And I don't know where my wife's feed went because it's probably much later in there. Oh, here it is. So see, this is my wife. So just so you guys know, she was very, very thankful. There's my wife. There's me. She used our picture. Uh, I know I don't like having my face everywhere, but. So she wrote just a, a big thank you to you guys. And you guys were so kind in your in your likes for it and in your comments back to her. She was so very, very appreciative. And uh, so was I. So I wanted to give you guys a, a big thank you shout out. And uh, her in particular as well. She she's We're not social media people. We've never done Facebook outside. I had people do it for me for my one business. Um, but I've never done facebook and twitter and all those things so when i was telling her about you know the the forum she was like eh, but i said look it's super easy all right so she went in there and she just put a thank you and uh you know you guys have been so gracious and we appreciate it and i want to say thank you for that as well and if she <laughs> if she's comfortable enough she'll probably uh give a couple responses or something as well all right <clears throat> so with that guys let's Excuse me, let's get going. Yes, I got an eggnog latte. Suckers for everybody who doesn't have one. Might want to pause and make yourself one. <laughs> All right. So, let's get going right off the bat. I called this one, Why? And the reason is because it's a perfect summary as to why. Like I said earlier, why we are so expectant. All right. So, let's get into it. One of the first things that was revealed to us was who the Gospels are speaking to. And it's like, uh, if many of you guys see, if you go to the YouTube channel where you guys are at, if you go to the playlist, we don't have many playlists in here. Just the first video I ever did, which is a two-part video on the Mark of the Beast, which is absolutely unbelievable. Then we have this next one, which is called Operation 14 Years. I've always loved that name. That was Keith's idea for Operation 14 Years. And this was the first three-part video we did on the revelation of the Gospels and the 14 years, and it was incredible. But as we got more understanding and more understanding, it didn't change the 14 years. We got greater and greater insight. And we put the next video together, the next series of videos in the playlist, excuse me, called um, the, the Timeline Study Notes Series. And in this, there's six videos. And that is much more detailed than what we had here. <clears throat> excuse me. And don't, don't get caught up if you guys go and watch these videos and you see how we're talking about the 70th year and 70th year. We thought that it was in 2018. You see, it's only because we've been deceived. We've spoken about that before. There was the deception. Everybody thinks that Israel is truly in their 71st year right now when they're not. They didn't have a government form till early 1949. Okay, we've covered that many times. <coughs> Excuse me. So go in there watching it 
understanding of what we know in this in relation to the 70th and you can watch it like that and it reveals the 21 years and the two sets of seven for the 14 and and the jubilee year at the end and the the whole thing is revealed which is a much more detailed than this one and then this playlist this final one coming into the understanding is a recent one that i put together with a couple of videos from here and some of the newer videos we've done revealing the 14 years and a full breakdown of the 14 years as well as um the the eighth day and how we got to this point and why we're expectant at this time right now in conjunction with these other revelations that have that have been given to us uh over time as well so if you're new and you want to get some greater understanding some depth into what we're talking about today you can watch this and this if you have enough time or you can see the progression you can watch this then this then this and you will get the understanding of what we're talking about but for a quicker summary of them all or, or detail of them all, you can watch this one here, coming into the understanding. <clears throat> all right. So as I said, the first one that came to into the revealing was who the Gospels are speaking to. You see, that's the first one in the playlist, a look at the Gospels like never before. But like I said, <clears throat> excuse me. But like I said, we're not going to go into every piece, which is why I was bringing up those other videos that you can go into. Okay. What we came to understanding was that everything we've been getting taught has been from Matthew, right? We've grown up in Matthew, 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 Matthew. And because we're an eschatology or an end time understanding and revealing ministry, watching for the return and what is about to begin, Everybody, in all of us, we've all learned from Matthew, and in particular, Matthew 24, it's a broken record, all right? And that record should be broken, literally, because we've been getting taught from Ju from the point of Judah, from the point of the Jews. It's not speaking to us. It has nothing to do with us. And yet, the pastors and the teachers know this. They know it speaks to the Jews, and they believe that Mark is to the Gentiles, and some believe that Luke is also to the Gentiles, which is correct, but a different portion. So knowing this is to the Gentiles, they still keep teaching 90% of their sermons from Matthew. Crazy, right? So we came to understand that Matthew was speaking to Judah, which wasn't a surprise. That Mark is speaking to the church, which is a little bit of a surprise, but more clarity. And Luke, the mystery, is speaking to the bride. The portion of the church that will escape all these things luke is speaking to the bride of christ mark is speaking to the left behind church and matthew is speaking to judah now not because i say so but because the scriptures have revealed it <clears throat> let me show you for example when we go into oh let me do this one when christ is crucified on the cross okay remember this is a summary video when christ is crucified on the cross and in his last breaths in matthew mark and luke okay so in, in, when the way we do it is instead of saying matthew mark and luke we now go luke mark matthew because luke will escape all these things mark will be the rapture group at the end of their portion and Matthew is when the Lord will return feet down on the Mount of Olives and will remain here with them till the end of the world. Okay? <clears throat> so when we look at it, what do we see in Luke, for example, at the crucifixion? Luke 23, 46. Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. And he gave up the ghost. When we go into Mark, what do we see the Lord says? Mark 15, verse 34, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? The word forsaken means leave me behind. Why have you left me behind? In the book of Matthew, we see again at the crucifixion, Matthew 27, verse 46, my God, my God, why hast thou left me behind? Why is it? that Luke says, into your arms I commend my spirit. 
while Mark and Matthew both say, why have you left us behind? You see? It's the mystery that was revealing as to who the Gospels were speaking to. Do you know, I didn't even know <clears throat> when this started being revealed to me and it started with who the Gospels are speaking to. It began with the discourses. It began with the discourses. I didn't know that there was even a discourse in the book of Mark. When, this, when it started being revealed, I was in the middle of a video on September 8th, 2017, and I was in Luke's discourse, and I think a little bit in Matthew's, to Revelation 12, having just copied what other people were saying, and something caught my attention in Luke's discourse to the Revelation 12 things that were being taught. And I thought, wait a second. And that was the moment when I listened and followed the Holy Spirit in the guidance of all of these understandings. And I didn't know Mark even had a discourse. Two years ago, I had to, a little over two years, I guess, I had to go look up, type in discourse Mark in Google, and it showed me it was Mark 13. I didn't know there was one in all three discourses. You see, guys, I had no idea of these things. But as they began to be revealed, we started noticing these things. We, we see that in Luke chapter 1, verse 1 or 2, Luke knew all things. Luke knows all things, he says. That Mark stuff and those that were taught and learned from Mark and Matthew, having been witnesses, it said, they were good. But I know all things, Luke said. All right? Just more of these wordings. So many of us have been taught, if not all of us in church, have been taught that the reason of the Gospels having different views is because if I had a big room and there was divided into three parts, and this group listened to the things in Matthew, and this one views more of the things in the viewpoint of Mark, and this group views them more in the way of Luke, it's just different perspectives they would teach us. Just different perspectives of, of the way things were being said, but it's all about the same thing in the same time. No. The mystery and the revealing and the end time understanding, it is not. And that is what has been revealed here in who the Gospels are speaking to. Let's have a look at the robes, for example. Okay, back into Luke. <clears throat> In Luke uh, 23, verse 11, Jesus, going to the cross, he was given a gorgeous robe in Luke. Clear, bright, gorgeous, white, radiant. Okay? When we go into Mark, and we see Jesus going to the cross, this is one of those awesome teachings that all you got to do is ask your pastor. You have a couple minutes with your pastor, you ask him, you say, Pastor, why at the crucifixion of Matthew, Mark, and Luke was Jesus given a different color of robe? Or does he have a different color of robe? Let them try to answer that one for you. Most of them don't even realize there was a different color. In fact, I've never came across one who does realize or who did realize there was another one. So here we are in Mark 17. Uh, sorry, in Mark 15, verse 17. And they clothed them with a purple robe with a purple robe, and it's 4209. When we go to Matthew, <clears throat> again in Matthew 27, here we are in Matthew 27, verse 28, and they stripped him and put on him a scarlet robe. Scarlet can also be scarlet or crimson. You see that? Three different colored robes. If you go and look it into the book of John, you see that he was given a purple robe in John, but that the number was off by one or two numbers compared to the purple in Mark. Why? Because it relates, without going into great detail, remember I'm trying to summarize, that why, did, why is John's purple a little bit different? Because John is, is an overall speaking, in a sense, to the 144,000. John, you'll see it later, gives us the overall of the 21 years in his books. But within it, there's a focus of the 144,000. And the 144,000 
come out of the group that will be raptured, just like we read in Revelation chapter 7. The 144,000 are sealed from among men on the earth, right? Revelation chapter 7 or, or Revelation 14, more descriptive of them. They are sealed from among men on the earth. And they are sealed what? Before the great multitude is brought in. In Revelation chapter 7, the second half. That's why they're both purple, but not the exact same number of purple. You see, when you go to the book of Revelation and you see what the, the woman was arrayed in and what the dragon and so forth, right? The beast. Is there any gorgeous, bright, radiant robe there? No. That is for the bride. What colors do we see in the book of Revelation during tribulation? We see arrayed in purple and scarlet. We see arrayed in Mark and Matthew. You following? You see how this all correlates directly to the revelation? <clears throat> how about this? And this one, I don't want to spend too much time because this can go really long. But if we look at the discourses, everybody likes to say, oh, but nobody knows that day and hour. Nobody knows the day and hour. Well, first of all, the day and hour is only talking about a two-day portion of time. Okay? It's not a mystery uh, of whether it's this year or that year. We should all be aware of the season and time that we're in right now. Especially if we're watching. Okay? But what does Luke say? Without getting too far into it, we see that Luke has his own words right here. Matthew and Mark, in their discourses, have no black words. They, they, they don't jump in at any point. It's Jesus' words the whole way through. But Luke jumps in. And why? He says, then he said unto them, as if Luke was overhearing, but he wasn't, but it was like Luke was overhearing what Jesus was saying to Mark's group and to Matthew's group. Then he said unto them, nations shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, great earthquakes, famines, pestilence, all these different things, right? But then Luke says, but before all these, so before all these things, which is the red horse rider time forward, when nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, okay, when the great sword comes, red horse rider time, before all those things, they'll put you in synagogues, uh, in prisons, and some of you will be killed. It's a very short period of time. But then we don't have, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, as Daniel the prophet said, as you, as you read in Mark and in Matthew, what we have in Luke is it says, And when you shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, know that the destruction, the desolation thereof is near. And those that be in Judea and in the surrounding areas flee. For these be the days of vengeance that all things which are written may be fulfilled. Tribulation is now going to begin. Okay? When we follow it further down and we come down to this point here in Luke 21, 34, this is that point in Luke 21, 34 where Matthew and Mark have the portion that talks about, but of that day and hour knows no man. Okay, but in Luke, it does not say that. In Luke, it tells us, take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with the suffering and drunkenness and cares of this world, so that that day comes upon you unawares. If you're watching and you're praying and you're seeking him, it won't be a mystery. As he tells us in, in Luke chapter 12, I think verse 56 through there. You can tell the, 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 the wind when it comes over and it's going to be warm and it's a warm day. You can tell when, the, when something blows from this way or you know, or when it's red at night, it's going to be a nice day and so on and so forth. Or when it's going to rain. But you can't determine this time, he says, you hypocrites. That's what he says in the scripture. Meaning we can know this season and time that we're in. And we do. Okay, and what is this group going to get to do? Those who are repentant in the Lord, who are watching and praying always, 
They are watching and praying always that they may be found accounted worthy to escape, which is for the bride. All these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. And then you see Luke end in his discourse with, and in that day at the time was teaching, he went and abode in the Mount of Olives and all the people came to him early in the morning into the temple to hear him. Okay? Not the same as what we read in Mark's discourse. Mark's discourse, it goes right into nation shall rise against nation, people against people, kingdom against kingdom. These are the beginnings of sorrows and tribulation. Yeah, this is the beginning of seals. Okay, then you'll be brought and so on and so forth. When you see the abomination of desolation standing where it ought not. We did a video of this. Why is this saying standing where it ought not? And <clears throat> excuse me, and Mark says standing in the holy place. Because this standing where it ought not is the chip in the body. All right? When the Antichrist reveals himself and there's going to be that chip, it'll begin in 2021. And by 2022, it will become mandatory and people will absolutely be in flight for their lives or being killed for not taking the mark. When we follow it down, you can even see things in the differences here when uh, then they'll see him coming in a cloud. But let's go to this one, see. But of that day and hour knoweth no man. You see, Luke doesn't have it. And why does Mark speak differently than Matthew's discourse? Okay? It is again different. Similar in the starting with famines and earthquakes, nation against nation, people against people. Okay? When we read, stand in the holy place for that abomination of desolation. This is the second one from Daniel 12, abomination of desolation. This is when Satan is cast out in that late 2029, 20, 2030. When he is cast out and he is here on the earth. He will stand literally in the rebuilt temple. Mid trumpets. And they're to flee again. Okay. You can even see it in the wording here of when they see the Lord, when he shall appear. You see, and it says, and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man. The other ones don't have this sign of the Son of Man. But because we're always taught from Matthew 24, everybody's looking for this sign of the Son of Man. But there is no sign of the Son of Man in that sense for us. All right. And there it is again, but of that day and hour, knows no man. <clears throat> so without going too far into all of these things, you know, I'm trying to give a, a, a as brief but detailed summary as I can. I'll finish it up with the end of Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Check this out. You go to the last chapter of Luke. And let's go to some simple things right here. When he appears to the disciples, okay, they're terrified. He's not giving them railing accusations. They thought they had seen a spirit. Um, let's go right down here. Where is it? Okay. When he says... <coughs> He's talking about the things that must be revealed in him, in the law and in the prophets and in the Psalms. He opens to them their understanding and the repentance and remissions of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. What he's doing here is he's giving the instructions to the group who's remaining behind during the time of seals, who's going to help the people, the church during the time of seals who don't understand what has happened and what's what's necessary. Okay? These this is the group that's called the foundation. Like you read in Revelation 21 as, as the apostles, those who laid the foundation. At the end of of Mark, you read it and that's the speaking of the 144,000 that different type of purple right from John. That's the group that will go out and they are the 144,000 that will work during trumpets. When you read it at the end of Matthew, that group goes out until the 
uh, um, goes out, but they're no longer preaching. They are teaching the ways of the Lord because the Lord is now returned feet down on the Mount of Olives and will rule and reign for a thousand years. And he says he's now with them until the end of the world. And then you see his ascension here. He is carried up. <clears throat> Whereas in the book of Mark, you'll see that he is received up like a bride being carried and guests being received. And they were continually in the temple praising God, praising and blessing God. Amen. Okay. Now this, there was a group that was carried up that will be in the temple praising and blessing God. We go to the last chapter of Mark. <clears throat> and we see how he was received up. And he says, and they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them, confirming the word with signs following. Why? Because the 144,000, the Lord is with them and he is showing them signs. They're in direct connection with the Lord at this time. Okay, what are they going to have power to do? Mark 16, 15 through 17, and he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believes not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils, and they shall speak in new tongues. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. <clears throat> Excuse me, you don't see this in Luke. This is the description of the power that the 144,000 receive. Why? Because in mid-trumpets, when Satan is cast out of heaven and the pit is opened up, they're going to need this kind of protection against serpents and deadly things and poison and so forth. Okay? We go to the book of Matthew. And we will finish this portion here with Matthew. And you see that they were sent to go up to the mountain. Very different than him coming to them. And what does Jesus say in verse 18 through 20? And Jesus came and spake unto them saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Whoa, wait a second. That is nothing like we just read in Luke or in Mark at the end of their, at the end of their books. You see... A different group here is doing something else, but now the Lord is here with all power on earth and in heaven. Precisely as we read at the end of the seventh, uh, uh, at the seventh trumpet, the Lord returns feet down at the end of the sixth trumpet, at the end of 13 years, which we'll touch on, and the seventh trumpet, everything in heaven and on earth is his. And here he is now saying, everything in heaven and on earth is his. And he says, go ye and teach all nations. No longer preach because the Lord is here. They'll no longer need to believe that the Lord is here because everybody will know it. They will need to teach of his ways. <coughs> go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things which I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. You see, very different instructions given at the end of all three Gospels. Because it reveals who they are speaking to and when. You follow? <clears throat> now from here, let's bring this forward into the next revelation that came out, and I'll be faster with these things. This one still might be a little bit, but it will speed up. The next one, so it was these two things. It was the Gospels and who they're speaking to, and the re revelation of the 14 years that came next that revealed everything else that came after. Without having understood the Gospels first, I could have never understood the revelation that came next with the 14 years. So let's go, for example, look at this 14-year revelation. The One of the, the biggest, coolest, most straightforward understandings was one that everybody used to like to go to. 
Psalms 90 verse 10. And you know, you'll probably hear almost nobody talk about it anymore. And do you know why? Because everybody believes Israel is now 71. How on earth can you teach Psalms 90 and 10 or, or try to teach Psalms 90 and 10 if you believe the land that the scriptures have talked about for all these years is now 71? How on earth can you believe Psalms 90 and 10? How on earth can you believe in the desolations in the 70th year in, in Daniel 9? Or in Zechariah in the 70th year when everything's now in the 71st? It's one of the biggest revelations that 70th year. <coughs> okay, Psalms 90 and 10, the revealing of 14 years. The days of your years are, are three score and 10, which is 70 years. Okay, so what is it saying? The, your generation, your lifespan is 70 years. Israel, the generation, right? That will see this coming, that fig tree generation. You see, is 70 years. And if by reason of strength, their fourscore, which means 80 years, so you have 10 years, yet is their strength labor, see, tribulation, travail, sorrow, pain, and sorrow. It is labor and sorrow. It is tribulation for those 10 years if you survive from 70 to 80. For it is soon short period of time, cut off. So you have 70 to 80, there's 10 years. You have a short period of time, say a few months, I say about six months. That puts us at 10 and a half years. And we fly away. We flying away is not for the escape of the bride. All right? It's not for the rapture of the church. It is talking about those who will fly away on the wings of the eagle like we read in Revelation 12, verse 14. When Satan is cast down, right? Satan is cast down mid trumpets. Well, what do we have? 10 and a half years, seven years of seals, three and a half years of trumpets. There's your 10 and a half years to the cutoff. And then what do they do? They will fly away on the wings of an eagle into the wilderness for a time and times and half a time for three and a half years. So you have 10, half a year <clears throat> and a flying away for three and a half years. What do you have? 14 years. That is the revelation of this. Do you understand nobody in, in, in anywhere that I've ever heard, nor do I know of anybody here in Ministry Revealed who uh, has heard this revealed anywhere on the planet Earth, the true understanding of Psalms 90 and 10? They'll tell you 70 years, see 70 years, but they won't tell you the rest of it. Why? Because they don't understand it. It's not being angry with them. It's just a fact. Okay, this is huge. And you, so you could imagine when I was thinking earlier, uh, just a couple few months ago, when I was still thinking that Israel was in their 71st. I was distraught with this, rev with this understanding because it's impossible. You see, guys, it's another one of those things that shows us it's impossible. If Israel is 71, <clears throat> we can go into the story <clears throat> briefly of the ark. After the 40 days came to an end, the raven and the dove are sent out. The raven returns, pulled into the ark, meaning into heaven as the type and shadow through the window, right? And then what does the, what does the dove do? Wait seven more years. Think the bride escapes, pulled into the and pulled into heaven. Then seven more years pass, the seven years of seals. Then the dove is sent out again after those seven years. And what does the dove do? The dove comes back with an olive leaf or an olive branch plucked off. Well, what is the word for harpazo? The word for rapture is plucked. And what would it pluck? What is the rapture group? It is the it is the tied in, it is the grafted in branch into the olive tree, the wild one. This is it being plucked off. 
Okay, the rapture, it's being taken out and will go into paradise. That's why you see it doesn't go into the ark. It goes on to the ark. And then seven more years pass. Seven more days, the type and shadow of seven years. This is the seven years of trumpets. And what happens when the dove goes out at, that, at the end of trumpets? The dove returns not again anymore. And it's now the 601st year, first day, first month of Noah. 6,000 and first year type and shadow. You see? And return not anymore. Well, what did we read at the end of Matthew? The very last verse, the Lord says, And now I am here with you until the end of the world. So what do you have? <clears throat> Before the 14 years begins, or at the start of the 14 years, you have the dove taken out the bride. Seven years of seals. Then you have the dove taken out the rapture group. Seven years of trumpets and the dove returns no more because the Lord is now here till the end of the earth. Amazing, isn't it? Seven and seven. Or how about this one? I'm going to be quicker with these. How about Abraham and his two sons? Abraham is first given Ishmael through Hagar, right? And Ishmael is called essentially affliction and he's called a wild man. His hand will be against everybody and everybody against his. All right, will never be settled down. This Ishmael, who is a wild man, who is for affliction, see, which is tribulation, <coughs> Abraham, when he had him, was four score and six. He was 86 years old when he had Ishmael. You go to verse 21, <clears throat> and then Sarah conceived, right? And Abraham is born Isaac. And how old was Abraham when he receives the promise? He was 100 years old. From Ishmael, which is like the raven going out and not coming back, right? At the beginning of, of the ark. You have Ishmael, the Arab, the raven, which means Arab. Go out at the beginning of the 14 years. And here at the start, at the end of 13, the start of 14 years, you have what? The promise. The Lord coming. Isaac, the promise. What? 14 years later. You see, over and over and over and over and over again. How about we look real briefly at Jacob's story? We talk about Jacob's story often here. Jacob reveals to us the 21 years. And I remember one of our brothers in Christ who, who doesn't follow us anymore because he just, for some reason, he just couldn't see it. But he argued with me when I first spoke about the 21 years and I didn't full, I was still learning it. And he said, oh, well, he doesn't get her right away at the beginning of the 21 years. He gets her after he works seven years. And I went, bingo, thank you. And shortly after we, we didn't talk anymore. <laughs> but what was it? Jacob working for, expecting to work for Rachel, right? And he gets Leah. And so what does he do? He serves seven years, which he calls what? And Jacob served seven years for Rachel. He thought he was going to get Rachel. For they seemed unto him but a few days. See? These are types and shadows, guys. All of these stories. They seemed but a few days. Why? Because he was so excited. The Holy Spirit is working hard. Is so excited to work to bring in the bride to Christ. And then what happens? He finds out he gets Leah. Right? And then he's told, work seven more years. All right? And uh, serve me yet seven other years. For what? So now he works seven years. This isn't the 14. This is the 21. There's seven easy years. And the bride of Christ will be taken up. Then he's going to work seven more years to get what? To get who? The one that he wanted, right? Well, did Jesus come for the Gentiles? 
Or did he say he came for the lost sheep? He said he came for the lost sheep, right? So what happens at the end of the next seven years that Jacob doesn't say were easy? He just says, ah, he worked them, but he really wanted Rachel, right? So now he works the seven years of quote unquote seals time. And what does he get? Then he gets Rachel. And what does he do? He works seven more years for the cattle. That's the trump, that's the trumpet's time. And look at what we have here in chapter 31. You see Jacob having this conversation with his father-in-law, and look what he says. This 20 years I have been with you. Thus have I been 20 years in thy house. I have served 14 years, seven easy years, escape of the bride, seven more years for the rapture, for thy two daughters, and six years for thy cattle, and you have changed my wages. And what does he do? He makes a covenant with his father-in-law in that final year, all right, after 20 years. If you take out seven of the easy ones, you have seven years of seals, and you have what? Six years of trumpets. When does the Lord return at the end of trumpets? He returns at the end of the sixth year, the end of 13 years. The seven of seals, the six of trumpets, and he returns. Why? Because, guys, it is six years of seals and the seventh rest. Six years of trumpets and the seventh rest. Have you noticed that? Have you guys noticed that, those who are newer? Have you noticed that there are six seals? You have some rest time here in chapter 7, but what is chapter 8? Rest, right? The seventh seal is another time of rest. And then when you go to the trumpets, you have six trumpets. When you get to the seventh trumpet, what is it? Just like we read in in uh, uh, um, in Matthew 28, right? What does it say at the seventh trumpet, which is the year of rest? The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever. You see? Six years work, seventh years rest. So how do we prove this? How on earth could we have been taught all of these years that the tribulation is seven years of tribulation when god's law itself in leviticus 23 the most straightforward most understood law that there is which is six days shall work be done but the seventh day is the sabbath of rest how can it be seven years of tribulation if the seventh year is rest. Creation was six days and on the seventh he rested. If men were here and we were perceiving it at that time, it would have been 6,000 in our, in our eyes and the 7,000th was rest. Are you understanding how everything is telling us 14, 14, 14, 14? How the, the, the reason why it shows six seals and the seventh is rest and six trumpets and the seventh is rest with the return of the Lord. Is because it's six and the seventh is rest. Amazing stuff. Okay. That is my brief overview of those 14 years for you. We have many, many other types and shadows. And I will show you more that will come about simply because of these things that will be revealed <clears throat> as we continue to go through it. We, we covered a little bit of this. The, the thing that then came from who the Gospels were speaking to in the 14 years, we were then revealed this understanding that was that it, it was a division in the churches. <clears throat> you know, whether somebody believed in seven years and, and didn't understand the 14, that wasn't the division. It's becoming a division now, but it's really bringing everything together. You see, once it was revealed of who the Gospels were speaking to, 
and the 14 years, we came to the re- realization in the scriptures that pre, mid, and post arguments were all true. Just like we showed you in Matthew, Mark, in Luke, Mark, and Matthew. There is a pre-tribulation escape of the bride. You see in Revelation chapter 7, which is after the sixth seal and before the seventh, meaning in the first half of the year of rest. Six years of seals have passed. Now in the seventh year of rest, the first half of it, you have the 144,000 and you have the rapture of the church. You see, there was a pre-escape, there was a mid-rapture, and there's a post-return feet down on the Mount of Olives. All three were true. But trying to understand and be revealed these things from just being taught from Matthew all of our lives, we can totally see this confusion of how they were mixing all three of them together. But some would say, look at this, it's speaking post, like uh, 1 Corinthians 15. And then they would say, what are you talking about? It's speaking mid. Look after. Look at the end of the sixth seal. And then you see chapter 7, that's where the 144,000 are sealed in the rapture of the church. You see, nobody realizes that the escape is for the bride. Everybody has lumped it into the term rapture, harpazo. They have missed the escape of the bride. The The bride doesn't get raptured. She gets escaped. She will go to the third heaven, to the throne room. The, the rapture group will go to paradise and the return will be here with heaven on earth. Follow? <clears throat> okay. And it's revealed, as we'll see, we spoke about it already a little bit in Luke, Mark, and Matthew's discourse. We showed it to you with the instructions that I showed you in Luke, Mark, and Matthew as well. You can see those two, three different groups going out at different times. And we saw that what? In Luke, he was carried up like a bride would be carried over the threshold. We see in Mark that he was, it says that he was received up like guests that would be received. And in Matthew, he's returned. You see? He's returned. Everything in heaven and on earth is now his. So what do we see in Luke 21, 36? found accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and when you see the wording of it here in luke in 2136 what is it tied to don't be cares and overcharged don't be caught in the drunkenness and cares of this world all right and then being found accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass to escape them all okay when we go to first thessalonians chapter five <clears throat> here we are same kind of wording that luke uses actually let's go to verse one but of the times and of the seasons brethren you have no need that i write unto you for yourselves know perfectly the times and the seasons that you're in. Exactly. Brethren, you know exactly the times and the seasons that you're in. You hear that? Just like we were told in Luke 12, 56, I think it is, that we should know this time. That the day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the night, for when they shall say, peace and safety, then sudden destruction shall come upon them as a woman in travail. And they shall not escape. They shall not escape. But what will begin upon them? <clears throat> exactly what we were saying in Psalms 90 and 10. The travail will begin. The travail, the woman will be revealed and the bride must leave before the travailing begins. When does this woman appear and the travailing begin? Right here. 
that the bride will have escaped, these will not have escaped. And her travailing, the, ten, the 70 to 80 will begin. The travailing, the turmoil, the pain. But you see, when I was saying in Luke 21, how it's connected to what? Uh, Brother, we're not of darkness, we are of that light, so don't let it overtake you. And what does it say? 1 Thessalonians 5, 6 and 7. Therefore, let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep in the night and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. You see, so what kind of talk do we have? Escape. They will not escape. A group will escape. Don't be caught in these things of the night and being drunken, but be sober and be of the light. These are the same words. <clears throat> the same conversation having in Luke 21, verse 36. Well, uh, 20, uh, 34 through 36. You see? It's the pre-tribulation escape. Or how about one of my old favorites? 2 Corinthians 12, verse 2 through 4. But in particular, verse 2 here. I knew a man in Christ above 14 years. In the body, out of the body, I cannot tell. Such as one caught up to the third heaven. Such as one is the word like. Like one who was caught up to the third heaven. Like a rapture. Like a harpazo. Not a harpazo. Like a harpazo. And this group, this first one, went to the third heaven. And I knew such a man. <clears throat> Whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell. Only God knows how that he was. You see, this was like this one, how he was harpazoed into where? Paradise. Remember the word harpazo? I said plucked. See, it means to pluck. See? To pluck, take by force. How he was caught up into paradise. And you see, what kind of conversation is, is Paul having here? He's speaking as if here the third time. See, behold, the third time I am ready to come to you. He's speaking to Judah. The first time, I like a harpazo, I escaped a group out of here. The second time I came, I raptured a group to paradise. Now I am come the third time, Judah. This time I am come to you. And I will not be burdensome to you. For I seek not yours, but you. For the children are not to lay up for the parents. Because Judah, they are the parents. They laid up for the children. So now, because it, it is not for the children to lay up for the parents, but the parents for the children. See, the third time I am now ready to come to you. The first time was the escape of the bride to the third heaven. The second time was the rapture group going to paradise. Where do we see this exact same terminology was caught up? We see it in Revelation 12 that everybody loves to talk about because they only understand the rapture, not the escape. The escape, guys, is the mystery that Paul spoke about. The rapture was not the mystery. It's everywhere. Okay? Here's your rapture. Revelation 12, verse 5. And shall rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child, look, was caught up unto God and to his throne. And you would say, well, wait a second. How is it to his throne? How is he caught up into his throne? Well, you got to remember at the end of the sixth seal, who do they see coming? Right? We'll touch on that as well. The Lord, the Lord is coming on Mount Zion. It's not the time of his feet down yet. He's coming on Zion, the mountain carved without hands. Paradise. The place prepared for this group who's being caught up. Okay? <clears throat> now, what about the church group? Okay? Well, first of all, like I said before, we see them right there in Revelation chapter 7. Six seals have passed, and then it says, and after these things... 
After what things? The six seals. The, the, the winds that are holding the earth in the, the, from the four corners. Not to, har not to harm or blow on the earth and on the sea, nor on any tree. See, what are these four? These are the first four trumpets. Hold off, you're saying to the first four. That are gonna, these guys are going to do that damage on the earth. And I saw another angel ascending, saying to them, see, hold off. Because they were given, these four angels were given to hurt the earth, which is the first four trumpets that comes next. Saying, hurt them not till we have sealed the 144,000 in their foreheads. Okay? Hurt not the earth. Don't do any of these things on the earth because we have to seal these this group first. Well, where is this group then? They're on the earth. All right? And then what do we see? After this. So after the 144,000 are sealed, I beheld. So after this John purple group is sealed, purple robe group is sealed, this purple robe group from Mark represented is now, see, that great multitude. After this, I beheld in low a great multitude, which no man can number of all nations and kindred and people and tongue stood before the throne. You see, it's so big a number that they, they can't name it. it. It's too big. Okay. And what do we see? And before stood uh, before the throne and before the lamb clothed with white. We're going to talk about this comma and palms in their hands. It's a division of two type of people there. <clears throat> You'll see who they are in a bit. I might have to make this two videos. Okay, so there's, there's your rapture group. At the end of six seals, in the seventh year of rest, you have chapter seven for about half a year, and then you've got chapter eight, which is the seventh seal, which says it's about half an hour of rest. That's about six months. See that? So that's your rapture group there. It's the same like we were just saying in Revelation 12. That was caught up rapture group. All right. And where did they go? They go to paradise. Where else did we see this? We saw it in Genesis 8, chapter uh, verse 11, right? With the olive branch, the leaf olive branch plucked out in the dove's mouth. This is all talking about the rapture group, guys. I am not trying to wake up a rapture group. I am trying to wake up those in the church to become part of the bride. To let them see the understanding. To be prepared and know. To be repentant, watching and praying always. To be found accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass. And then when we get to Judah... Like we read already in Matthew 28, the last verse, it says, and I am with you until the end of the world. Do you see how confusing that can be when we're being taught from Matthew all of our lives? This is talking about the end. He'll be here until the end of the world when he comes after 2,000 years. When he comes feet down on the Mount of Olives at the end of 2,000 years. All right? It'll be the 6,000th year, 2,000 since his death and resurrection. And then, of course, Genesis 8, verse 12. Let's go look at that one again real quick. <clears throat> and guys, those of you who are new, understand we have way more revealed in all of these other videos. These are just some quick key ones. Okay? Remember this with the ark? You had the escape, then seven years of seals, the rapture, then seven years of trumpets, and the dove returned no more. See that? And the dove returned no more. It's the same wording. And the dove returned no more unto the ark. Why? Because the Lord is now on the earth and with them until the end of the world. Or we go to Zechariah 14, which will be another portion that we'll show a little bit more as well. When we show the some books that have been opened and revealed as Daniel was told would happen in the end of days. 14 chapters for 14 years. We'll talk about it later on. Chapter 14. Remember, just like when the promise came after 14 years, it's really the end of 13, the start of 14 time frame. 
It's like the end of the sixth trumpet, the end of 13 years, and the start of the seventh trumpet, the 14 years, and everything that is the Lord is now his in heaven and on earth. Well, what do we see here in Zechariah 14, verse 4? And his feet shall stand in that day on the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem on the east, and on the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst. You see? He's now returned, feet down on the Mount of Olives. When? At the end of the 13th to the start of the 14th year. See, just like we were saying, go to, see guys, we go from Genesis to Revelation. See, go to the end of the go to the end of the sixth trumpet. What do we see at the end of the sixth trumpet? In the same hour, there was a great earthquake, and a tenth part of the city fell. Why? Because the Lord returned feet down on the Mount of Olives. The mountain cleaved in two. In that great earthquake, and were slain seven thousand men, and the remnant were afraid, and gave glory to God of heaven. You know how many earthquakes will have already been taking place during this time? How many great earthquakes will have already taken place? Like America being ripped apart? I mean, there will have already been some incredible, major, devastating, unbelievable earthquakes. And now they're suddenly afraid? And suddenly give glory to God? Why? Because they will see him coming down feet down on the Mount of Olives. It is him coming down that causes that great earthquake at the end of the sixth trumpet. And what happens at the seventh? Boom. Everything in heaven and on earth is his. You follow, guys? It's the exact same thing. It is called the escape of the bride. The rapture of the church. And the return for Judah. Bride. Left behind church. Left behind Judah. Father, into your arms I commend my spirit. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me, left me behind? My God, my God, why have you forsaken me and left me behind? Okay? Let me do... Daniel 9, very quickly. Daniel 9 is the next thing that was revealed. Okay? So what did we just go there? We were talking about the pre, mid, and post. The next big thing is Daniel 9. <clears throat> Daniel 9 could have never been revealed or understood in a seven-year understanding. It is a prophetic thing being spoken about. Okay? We have Daniel 9.24. It says 70 weeks or years. They've gone and multiplied these weeks of years by weeks and sevens and seven times the seven of the seven. And they come up with all of these numbers. Maybe there was an application and it somehow worked to when Christ came. But Daniel is speaking prophetically to the end. His whole book is. Why, why does it say in the 70th year? Why does Daniel 9 start with in the desolations of Jerusalem in the 70th year. You see? So we have verse 24 talking about 70 weeks, which is years. So from the 70th year, there's going to be a decree to go out to rebuild Jerusalem. And it shall be seven weeks or years before it begins. <clears throat> Let me show you. It'll be seven weeks or years before it actually begins. Okay? There's your 70 weeks of years. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to rebuild Jerusalem. You see what's going to happen? For Jerusalem to have a decree to get restored and rebuilt, they have to be destroyed. It has to be attacked again, you see? And that is going to happen before they turn 71. So they're about to be attacked. And then there's going to be a decree to allow them to go out and build and rebuild it. But it won't come to fruition because the seven years of tribulation will, be, will have begun. You see? There'll be this declaration to restore and to rebuild it unto Messiah the Prince. But it shall be seven weeks 
or years comma and it's a separation of time we're going to touch on this as well three and a half weeks three and a half years the street shall be built again and the wall even in troublous times the wall cannot be built until what remember we touched on it the wall cannot be built until the foundation is laid who are the ones representing the foundation those who are chosen to work during seals The apostles and the disciples who will work during seals are the foundation layers working during these seven years. When these seven years, because of this comma and, this is a division. When these seven years are completed of the laying of the foundation, the next three and a half years they will spend rebuilding the streets and the walls again as well as the temple. And when these three and a half years come to an end, Messiah, who is here, well, how is he here? Remember, he's coming on Mount Zion. He will be here on Mount Zion. Remember we were just saying the, the, the mountain carved without hand, the place prepared paradise where the rapture group is going to go. You see, He's going to be there on Zion. It's going to be sitting on the mountains or in the clouds or however that's going to work. And they're going to be rebuilding it now for those three and a half years unto him. And then he's going to cut himself off. So where are we at? Seven and three and a half. Remember Psalms 90 and 10? Ten years and then a short period of time, a half, right? I say about six months. There's ten and a half years and then cut off. What do we have? seven and three and a half and then messiah is what cut off he's going to cut himself off because why because satan the people of the prince that shall come how can we prove this seven years before they start rebuilding the city and the streets watch this we can go to micah you notice how micah has seven chapters there's a reason why micah has seven chapters it's the seven year time frame of seals you see the coming destruction it starts with for the transgression of jacob this is it Uh, and for the house of israel for the sins of the house of israel when you get to the seventh chapter the lord's looking for his his grapes now his his grape ripe fruit which is what the hundred forty four thousand, right in the time of judah coming well listen to what it says here micah 7 verse 11 remember we're now in the seventh year of rest right what would come next if you're seven years of seals and this is the rest here it starts off with him talking about the the grapes the first fruits of the grapes which is the 144,000, which are sealed at the seventh year of rest at the beginning of it here we are in the seventh year of rest in the type and shadow and what does he say next in micah 7 verse 11 in the day that the walls didn't we just read that that the walls in daniel that you're talking about in the day that the walls are to be built in that day shall the decree be far removed you follow that in that day when the walls are to be built when the walls are to be built the commandment the decree will have been far removed seven years apart. See that? So we got the seven years of seals that must pass, the time of the Gentiles, the time of the church age to come to an end. When it comes to an end, the Lord will have returned with the mountain carved without hand, the place prepared for them. He will receive the 144,000 in the rapture group there, And then they will begin to rebuild the city and the streets and the temple. And for three and a half years, they will be building it. Until that ten and a half year time frame, Messiah will cut himself off. Why? Because the pit, Satan will have lost his battle in heaven at the fifth trumpet. The pit will have opened up. And the people of the prince shall come and destroy the city. And the sanctuary and the end thereof shall be with a flood. And until the end of the war, see there's a war, 
that is going to be brought up against the two witnesses after they finish their three and a half years with the Lord of prophesying. They're going, the people of the prince are going to make war with the two witnesses. And that war will end after two and a half years. How do we know this? Daniel chapter 12. Remember, I'm doing this fairly quickly. Daniel chapter 12, when he says, how long will this last? And it is for a time, times and a half. There's no word and here. We'll touch on that in a minute as well. Okay. It will last for two and a half years. So what are we at? We have in the 70 years that are determined, then we're going to have seven years three and a half years of rebuilding the city and the streets until the then messiah leaves and they will fly away on the wings of an eagle and then you have the two and a half years of time times and a half with satan and his minions going after the two witnesses until they're finally killed at the end of the sixth seal uh at the end of the sixth trumpet so what are we at seven three and a half for ten and a half to here two and a half for this with satan and his guys that puts us at what the end of 13 years and what do we see coming in the final year in the final week he shall confirm the covenant with many for one year and then he's got to clean up and clean up everything that they had destroyed and for the overspreading of abominations see the the abominations were already taking place in it he is now going to make it desolate until the pouring out of the bowls. How long was this? Seven, three and a half, two and a half, and one. For a precise total of what? 14 years. It's revealed in Micah. It's also revealed, without going too much further into that, it's also revealed in Zechariah, see you have seven years of seals and then you have your seven years of trumpets well if this is the beginning of trumpets the lord should be on zion and they should be ready to start building the city in the streets correct there he is thus saith the lord i am returned unto zion and will dwell in the midst of jerusalem and the mountain of the lord the mountain uh the lord of hosts the holy mountain and then what's going to happen let your hands be strong you that dwell in these days because why they're going to start rebuilding the city and the streets on which the foundation of the house of the lord of hosts was already laid just like we said here in the seven years of seals just like we said in micah the seven years see there was no way to rebuild everything because there was no peace on the earth because the Lord had brought affliction and set every neighbor against every man, everyone against his neighbor. When he's telling us at the beginning of trumpets for seven years, you could not rebuild. Just like I told you in Daniel, because the tribulation that was going on against the church and the time of seals, which wasn't for you, Jacob is now over and you will start rebuilding for three and a half years the city and the streets for i will be on zion over it all isn't this crazy isn't this crazy guys you follow that you understanding this man there's so much I don't, oh man i really want to get into it all maybe i'll just keep going this one i'll touch on very briefly we showed you in a couple points it's the revelation of the comma and the little comma and the word and remember in daniel 29 20, 25 i showed it to you between seven all right after seven weeks comma and it is a vital small but vital piece of understanding it's a separation and an addition it's not like one and then two and then three and a half. So that would be like one, two, three and a half. No, 
this is one and two and three. That would be one plus two plus three. You see, and that would equal six. It wouldn't equal three or three and a half saying one, two, three and a half. Okay, that is vitally important to understand. It's a separation, not a continuous in counting of numbers. So it's a separation between the seven years and the three and a half years of the rebuilding of the city and the streets. But in a total, yes, they will be added together as well. That's why you have a comma and the word and. When we go to Revelation, uh, Daniel chapter 12, and we go to Revelation chapter 12, you'll see, this is what we were talking about here, Daniel 12, verse 7. And it shall be for a time, comma, no word and, times and a half. This is one year, two years, and a half, so two and a half years. When we go to Revelation chapter 12, and we see this same time frame, but it's longer because they will remain away for the entire duration. What does it say in Revelation 12, 14? And, the woman, and to the woman were given wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness to a place where she is nourished for a time, comma, and times, and, comma, and half a time. You see, that is one plus two plus a half, three and a half years. This is that woman flying into the wilderness and we fly away. Psalms 90 verse 10, the last part. Ten and a half years, Psalms 90 and 10, fly away for the last three and a half years, 14 years. You see, in Daniel, not, in Daniel 12, it was showing us two and a half years because that's how long that craziness, how long will this last, O Lord? Because it's the craziness with the pit and Satan being cast down. He's saying it'll last for two and a half. Then I'm going to come in that final year and clean up. And during that final year, you guys here are still going to be hidden out in the wilderness. In the place protected where you'll be nourished. You'll remain till the full three and a half years have finished. Then I will bring you back and I will be with you until the end of the world follow amazing amazing stuff let me show it to you here in revelation 7 that i touched on with this comma and this is massive this is so amazing to understand these things remember this the great multitude here this is the rapture group and they stood before the throne and before the lamb well how are they standing before the throne and before the lamb at the end of the sixth seal you see them coming how do we know what have they come on they have come on mount zion the place prepared just like we were saying earlier, okay? Not the Lord feet down on the Mount of Olives yet. They are on Mount Zion, the place prepared. And what does it say? And I saw standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes, comma, and palms in their hands. Well, who are the ones in white robes? If this is a division, an addition, that would mean there's a group in white robes and a group with palms in their hands and maybe they'll have a combination of both but it's a division of two separate groups so who are the ones in white robes the ones in the white robes standing now before the throne are the ones at the fifth seal who we saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the testimony of god uh, for the word of god and the testimony which they held how long before you will not judge them, O Lord? How long before you will judge them and avenge our blood? And white robes were given to them and told to wait a little season until the rest were killed as they were. These are your white robes. These are these guys here. So who are they? These are the ones that were under the throne, now standing before the throne. And who are the ones with palms in their hands? <clears throat> they are the raptured group, those that were alive. Those that were alive at the time of the rapture. See, Psalms 24. And who shall ascend the hill of the Lord? 
See, when the Lord comes, yes, there's a type and shadow in the count of the book of Psalms as well, just like Zechariah and Micah and Hosea. Who shall stand in the hill of the Lord and who shall stand in his holy place? He that has clean hands and a pure heart. Okay, he that has clean hands. See, like the leaves, the palm tree, the hollow, the palm branch, the palm of the hand is what it's talking about. This is that group that will be found account or will found worthy to go up to ascend into the mountain. If we go back to chapter 18, which is the end time beginning of what we're at time frame right now, we see a different group here that the Lord will rescue when this great shaking begins, when they will declare, I believe, the peace and safety and they shall not escape. Here's the group that will be taken out. And he brought me also into a large place and he delivered me because he delighted in me. The Lord rewarded me unto, the, unto my righteousness and according to the cleanness of my hands. Okay, here was the, the number for those hands that will get to go up the mountain those with the representation of the hollow or the palm of the hand as the palm tree type and shadow with the palms in their hands this group which is the escape group that is taken out first at the beginning they are rewarded for the cleanness that they already have and here is the cleanness of their hands here is the rapture group that of the alive. Here is the escape group of those alive. It is 3227, the hand as in the open power in the open hand. It is not the same group. That is what Revelation chapter 7, it is telling us the difference between the dead in Christ during seals that were beheaded and took not the mark of the beast and so on and so forth and those that were alive having been harpazoed standing before the throne and the lamb amazing amazing incredibly amazing stuff here's what we just talked on a little bit throughout we'll touch on it here very quickly one of the next things that came was books opening in the end time understanding just like daniel 12 said in the time of the end understanding will be greater right the the technology is what it is and these understandings will be revealed in the end of days and that is precisely what is happening here in ministry revealed we've shown it with many many books i'm not going to go into all the books i told you it showed we just talked about it a little bit here in the book of psalms We've shown it in Ezekiel. And what we're talking about is chapters to years that line up. Events that will happen in each year of these coming 14 years. Hosea is a great example. See, Hosea has 14 chapters because it is the 14 years. We've proven it. We've got videos on it. You can go see those videos for yourself. It is the 14 years speaking to the church. And see chapter 1, verse 2, and the beginning, the word of the Lord by Hosea. The Lord said to Hosea, go take unto thee a wife of whoredom, a wife of adultery. See that? Go get your Gentile bride. And you could follow it. You can go to the end of this time frame of six seals. Let us return unto the Lord. He has smitten us. He has bound us, but he will heal us. And after two days, he will revive us after 2,000 years, right? And in the third, we will know if we live in his sight at the end of 7,000. Not everybody is resurrected after two days, all right? Each in their time. And you can go and see these types and shadows all revealing the prophetic of the 14 years. Then I just showed you earlier with Micah the seven. One of another favorite that we have is Zechariah. So Hosea is speaking to the church. Zechariah is speaking to Judah. And we've just showed you after seven years of seals, you would have what? The Lord would be returning 
on Mount Zion. At the end of the 14, when the promise comes, he comes what? At the, sorry, at the end of 13 to the start of 14, he comes feet down on the Mount of Olives. What will they be building during the three and a half years? They will be rebuilding the city and the streets. And after three and a half years, who's coming? The vintage of old has come down. This is Satan being cast out of heaven here. And what does the Lord do? Remember after 10 and a half years, he will cut himself off? Well, check this out. Zechariah 11 verse 10, And I took my staff, even beauty, and cut it asunder. These are the two witnesses. That I might break my covenant, which I made with all the people. The Lord has got to break the covenant. Why? Their time is up. A generation is from 70 to 80. And then a short period of time before, boom, we're out of here. He's speaking to Judah before, I cut off. Why? Because then it is Satan and his minions. This covenant that he made is the covenant with many, all these nations that he made on his return on Mount Zion. After a great devastating destruction at the end of uh, in the sixth seal. When he will have destroyed the pawn his return. And he will make this covenant. But he will break that covenant because Satan is coming. He cannot keep it. Satan's coming. And then what is he going to do? Remember we saw in Daniel 9, 27. He will return in that final year and he will renew that covenant with many. This is the one all in their years that they should be in chapter one says these 70 years zechariah 1 verse 12 how long O lord for you will you not have mercy upon jerusalem and the cities of judah which you have had indignation these meaning current 70 years and where are we right now in the 70th year and what is the first year in? The 70th year. We get to chapter 7. And what does it say? Verse. Oops. Verse 5. When you fasted and mourned in the fifth and the seventh month, those, past tense, 70 years, did you at all fast unto me? By the former prophets, when Jerusalem was inhabited and in prosperity when men inhabited the south of the plain saying during 70 years you were living in the land saying those past tense 70 years when past tense was past tense jerusalem will be attacked and destroyed in the 70th year completely destroyed and wiped off the map no but devastated and nobody will dwell there anymore it will remain empty. Maybe the heathen trampling and so forth. But they will they will not be in their land for seven more years, for seven years. They're about to be taken out, and they will not return till the Lord brings them back at the beginning of trumpets, and they will rebuild and so on and so forth. Those that believe in him at that time when they see him coming. All revealed in seven years, in the 14 years. And we have the book of John. See, the book of John has 21 chapters. Well, look what happens. Seven years of easy ones have passed. And at about an eighth day, about what? Look at how many verses, how many chapters are left? 14 chapters. And what do we have right near the beginning? Just like Hosea, 14 chapters near the beginning. Early in the morning unto the temple, like we read in, in Luke 21, the end of Luke 21 that I showed you guys earlier. And what happens? A woman in adultery is brought to the lord adultery i just showed you the woman brought an adultery to him in hosea chapter 1 verse 2 with 14 years 14 chapters same as luke i'm uh, sorry same as john and what does he do he says who's going to be against them who's going to throw the first stone who, who doesn't have sin and jesus was left alone with the woman standing in the midst when Jesus had lifted himself, lifted up himself and saw none, 
but the woman. Bride of Christ, guys. Bride of Christ, that we be found accounted worthy to escape all these things and to stand before the Son of Man. And almost as if he was down on one knee like his bride, like he would propose to a bride. He, and then he lifted himself up and there was nobody standing there before him but his Gentile bride. And we're in the 70th year. Do you follow? Do you follow? Do you see why we're excited? How about then in the next seven? So you had seven and then the bride at the beginning of 14. See 14 chapters, 14 years. Here's your next rest year. When the Lord will come, what? On Mount Zion? Well, what do we see? Where I go, I go to prepare a place for you that when I come again, I will receive you unto myself. Well, isn't that appropriate? At the end of the seven years of seals, in that seventh year, just like Revelation says when he returns, just like Mark says, when they go to prepare a place, furnished and prepared, only Mark's is the one that says prepared. It is Mount Zion that he's returning with. And then we go, what? Six more years, not seven. We go to the end of six. And what should we see at the end of six? At the end of six is now the end of seven years of seals, six years of trumpets, so not at the seventh year of rest, but at the end of six is when the Lord will return, right? Is when the Lord will return. And here in John chapter 20 is the resurrection of the Lord. Is the resurrection of the Lord. Yet in the book of Matthew, Mark, and Luke, the resurrection is in the final chapter of each one. But in the book of John, it's in the 20th chapter, not the 21st. Why? Because he returns in that final year, like we've showed in every other piece here. He returns at the end of the 20th, or the same as saying, at the end of the 13th. And he renews that covenant in that final year. He will return feet down on the Mount of Olives at the end of the 6th. And will be here at the 7th. And here he is just the same thing. For as yet they knew not the scripture, that he must rise again from the dead. See, John also revealing the opening of the books. We covered much of this already on Mount Zion. The Lord coming on Mount Zion first. Right? At the end of Revelation 6, verse 16, they see him coming. This is paradise, the mountain carved without hands that he's coming on. Where the group of the rapture group will go. Where the 144,000 will stand before him and be given the power and authority to go out and for the three and a half years before they're then given greater power because Satan will be there. It's why in Revelation chapter 14, verse 1, we see, we see, and I looked, and lo, the Lamb stood on the Mount Zion. And with them, the 144,000. You see, that must have been a question many of you have had as well over the years. What is the Lord doing on Mount Zion? I thought the Lord wasn't coming till feet down on the Mount of Olives at the end. You see, this is the Lamb on Zion. Just like we said also in chapter 8. You see, oh, Revelation chapter 14 is after the seven easy years, then it's like saying, you can say a type and shadow of the seven years of seals, the 14th year, like we just said in John. All right? The seventh, uh, sorry, the 14th, we said in chapter uh, 14 of John, we said uh, uh, when he comes with the place prepared, the lamb on Zion, we just showed it in Zechariah chapter eight, seven years of seals, now the beginning of trumpets, and who's here? The Lord is on Zion. Having returned, it'll be his holy mountain of the Lord. He comes on Zion first. We've got a, a video 
when that was first revealed, when that was first revealed, like, look at it back here. I remember when I first came across this, I said, what? And I called it one of the most important videos. See how far back when this was revealed? Look at this right here. It was like a burr, burr, burr. Everybody must watch this. The most important end time video you'll ever watch. This was the first revealing of the Lord coming on Zion. And then I did a follow-up one. His return, the coming mountain. And then, of course, what we were talking about, the cleansing of the hands. The difference between those who can go up to this mountain when he comes compared to those who were already clean and went into the third heaven. Okay, so we've known about these things for a while. I was, um, it's amazing, amazing stuff, guys. Amazing stuff. Okay? How about this? When we spoke about this, we talked about this earlier, so I don't have to spend a lot of time in it. Feet down after 13 years and not 14. See, a lot of these things as we're going build into these other pieces. So now I can kind of speed up a little bit. All right? From Genesis 13, uh, 29 through 31, Jacob and his two wives and the cattle. Right? After 20 years. Which is, if we take out this first seven easy, you have seven years for the one and then six. So 13 years is the same as saying 20th year. Okay, you get it? We're just taking out the seven easy ones. Then you have Abraham with Ishmael and Isaac. 86 to 99, he's told the promise. And then when he's 100, the promise comes. Comes at the end of 13 to the start of 14. Daniel 9, 25 through 27. Verse 27, when he returns in that final year, after the two and a half years, with Satan and his minions and all those guys there, or Daniel 12, verse 7, what we talked about, time, times, and a half, compared to Revelation 12, 14, with the time and times and half a time. Or Revelation 14, verse 4, when he comes down on the Mount of Olives and splits the Mount of Olives. Or Revelation 11, 13, and 15, at the end of the sixth trumpet, the Lord returns feet down on the Mount of Olives and there's a great earthquake and it splits in two and everybody remains, looks up and gives praises to God. Do you understand? This one here I just went through quickly. I call it a key revelation. To many of you, you understand it. I've talked about it many times, but it is drastically important. This is another one of those things. I don't know any other ministry on the, on the earth that has been revealed and revealed all these things. Nowhere in the English speaking language and in many other languages from you guys that are watching from around the world have never understood or heard of these things before either. But within it, there are some drastic important revelations like this one here. Knowing that, Lord, I know you're coming at the end of 31, not at the end of 2032, all right? Which, again, you have to understand, 31, I say 31, it starts in the fall of 2031. It will end in the fall of 32. That is, the fall of 32 is the end of 13 years. From the fall of 32 to the fall of 33 is the end of 14 years. I call it 30, 2031 because 2031 is the year it begins in. Okay? But I knew these things were there. I was saying, Lord, I know it still works at the end of 14 years, but your scriptures show that it wasn't at the end of the 14. It shows you coming. There's like a year earlier. It's got to be a year earlier. And then it was revealed one night while I was showering. All of these verses came into mind and the thought came to my mind was, you were already teaching it. It was already revealed in all the stories I was teaching and showing about the 14 years. How in the final years when the covenant, the renewal, the, the promise came. It was a big deal, guys. Remember this. It is, un, it is important to understand. All, take all of these things in that I'm showing you. 
Okay, now we're, now we come to this point after all of these two years, and we come to this time frame that we're in now. We come to this time that we're in now, and we say, well, what is this eighth day? What is this eighth day that you're talking about? Why should we be so excited at this point when in all of history, all these people thought it in the 1800s and early 1900s and, and in 1988 and in 2000 and, and in September uh, 23rd? Why now? Why now? Israel was never 70 years old. The 14 years were never revealed in understanding. If it was only seven, why would the 70th year make any difference? Do you follow that? If it was only seven, then none of this should begin till around 2025, 2026. Making the 70th year obsolete and should have no bearing on any end time understanding, yet it's all throughout the scriptures. Think about that. And then think of how many years we have from where we are right now today. Okay? So what about this whole eighth day thing? Remember I said with Matthew, Mark, and Luke, how Matthew, Mark, and Luke, uh, sorry, how Matthew and Mark, Matthew is speaking to Judah, Mark is speaking to the left behind church, and we've understood the 14 years, and we have after six days in Mount Transfiguration for Matthew. Why? It's the after six days of trumpets. You see? So at the end of the six years of trumpets, in Mark, we understood Mark as well. Mark also says after six days. Why? Because it's after six years of seals. These had not been mysteries to us because we understood the 14 years. Six years of seals, seventh rest. That's why it had to be after six. Six years of trumpets, the seventh rest. That's why it had to be after six. But Luke's was a mystery. Luke's to us was a mystery for a long time because Luke said about an eight days, which means about eight years. What on earth is about eight years? If it's seven years easy, shouldn't we go in the seventh and kind of be like them? No. We go right near the start of the tribulation. Those seven easy years of working for the first bride will come to an end. Then what would be the next day? After seven days or seven years, the next day is the eighth day or the eighth year, which is also what? There were only seven days in a week, so the eighth is the what? is the first of the next set of seven. And this says about because it's right near the start of it. And here we are in the 70th year and this finally becomes revealed. What is the answer? John's 21 chapters. Hosea's 14 chapters. What is the answer? Seven years and the last thing John talks about in the seven, seventh chapter, it's about the Feast of Booths, the Feast of Tabernacles. And the Lord comes up and shows up in the middle of it. And then on the last day, he says, who will come to me? I will be the water. Whoever is thirsty, come to me. Is what he calls out on the last day. The last day of what? The Feast of Tabernacles, which is the seventh day. It's literally the seventh day. Okay, here it is. The seventh day. Okay, it's literally the seventh day called the Great Day. And it's in chapter 7. And when it ends, we go to chapter 8, which is what? <laughs> the beginning of the eighth day, the about an eighth day, which is just like going through the seven. And the next one is literally called 
the eighth day of assembly? In John, who's revealing to us the types and shadows and the mystery of the 21 years? And what do we have at the eighth day at the beginning of the chapter with 14 years, 14 chapters to go? We have the same wording that I showed you guys earlier at the end of Luke's discourse. And he went early in the morning and went to the temple and they came and listened to him at the temple. It's the same wording at the end of Luke's discourse. And then like we showed you earlier, what happens? The woman caught in adultery is brought to him. The woman caught in adultery is brought to him. At the beginning, at about an eighth day, and it just so happens to be the true 70th year of Israel, and it just so happens to be 13th to the 14th years away till when the Lord returns, feet down on the Mount of Olives. And it just so happens that Hosea, with 14 chapters, like John, at the beginning of 14 years to go, there is the Lord telling Hosea, the deliverer, to go get your wife of adultery. And it just so happens that this adulteress is the exact direct connection to our dear sister in Christ, Ruth. Our dear sister Ruth, our dear Gentile bride. The most famous Gentile bride of all, Ruth. And what does Ruth tell us in Ruth chapter 2? What does she say in Ruth chapter 2 verse 10? Why have I found grace in your eyes that you should take knowledge of me seeing I am a stranger. Remember, it was adulterous in John. It was adulterous in Hosea. And the Gentile stranger Ruth, who is the Gentile representation of the Gentile bride of Christ, calling herself a stranger, really saying she is what? The adulteress. Are you understanding are you comprehending why we're so excited? Look at the creation to understand the true 70th year. In Genesis 1, the creation, 6,000 years or six days in the 7,000th year is rest. Christ is 2,000 years to his return, feet down on the Mount of Olives, like we've shown in so many of these scriptures. Zechariah 1 Verse 12, these 70 years like I showed you. Zechariah 7, verse 5, those 70 years when you were in prosperity, when you inhabited the land, when you observed the fasting in the morning of the fifth and the seventh month, not the fasting that comes next in the 10th, which is January 7th, 2020. Daniel 90, uh, 9, Verse 2, 70 years in the desolations. Israel pronounced with the, with, the, with the May 14th in 1948, but the Lord did not recognize it until they had a government. They are not a nation without a government. And in January, on January 25th, 1949, Israel held their elections. I think it was an 86.9% voter turnout. See, I remember that too. And on February 14th, 1949, they held their first meeting after the elections. And by March 8th, 1949, David Ben-Gurion went in as the first prime minister of Israel. You understand we are in the 70th year? You understand why we're excited? Because of where we are right now, and it said the about an eighth day, and here we are. Whether it's this coming week, or whether it's the beginning in that January, February, March time frame, there is no other option, guys. 
with all this and so much more having having come to be revealed and understood through this ministry from these revelations is it any wonder why we are watching and praying harder than ever before with the full expectation of all of it about to begin this year do you understand guys we didn't make this up do you think it's possible that any of these things i showed you scripture back by scripture 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 and it was only a portion of these things that have been revealed here and only a portion of the things that those things have revealed israel the nation that had not been in its own land as a nation for almost 2000 years is now returned was formed and founded with its government as a nation for a fact in 1949 and this year right now for the next less than five months will be 70 years old precisely the age the scriptures have told us it would be and it would all begin then add to this the true understanding of the tribulation time frame of 14 years and his feet down after 13 years for the final year. And where we are right here, right now, in the fall of 2019. And you'll see it equals the 13 to 14 years to exactly the two days or 2,000 years from his death and resurrection to when we were told he would return feet down on the Mount of Olives? That he would return as he left? And you wonder why we're excited and why we're emotional wrecks? You wonder why we're trying to tell everyone even though they don't want to hear it? You wonder why we've been so frustrated trying to share it with those who say they're watchmen and church leaders? Yet none or very, very few of them want to listen. Never mind, talk with us about it. So why do we push on? Even though we're literally told we're crazy. Literally by church, church leaders and others who claim to be watching. We're literally told we're crazy. Yet we carry on. Why do we do it? Why? Because it truly is the 70th year in the final generation and everything the scriptures have told us would come in the end of days is about to begin and it will begin with the escape (coughs) of the chosen gentiles for his bride do you understand why can you see now why we're excited and you see why we can't stop <coughs> why we're trying to tell as many as we can and share it where we can with who we can because there is no other time i love and pray for you all and for your families here in ministry revealed and my family and i are all so grateful for you for all of your prayers and for your support <coughs> i could not have done this guys without you I'm very, very thankful. And I will continue until he tells me or shows me otherwise. And it's coming to an end right now perfectly because my voice is about to go. So we are watching and praying always to be found accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass. How we might stand before the Son of Man moments away. God bless, comfort, and watch over each and every one of you and your families always. In Yeshua, Jesus' name, amen. I love you guys. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Bye for now.